let's talk about random numbers in a circle. So first of all, why would you ever care and what, what are we talking about? So let's say I have a circle and I want to fill this with a random whole bunch of points. This is actually very useful in a Monte Carlo calculation or other simulations where you want to have evenly distributed points. So let me jump over here to Twitter and show you this post uh, by Keenan Crane that's very interesting. And then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna go from there. Okay, so this is a post uh, that says, hey, if you want to make points in a circle, you can't go pick an R and a theta randomly and distribute them. It doesn't work. And they show you that's what they see right here on the left. Uh, there's other ways to do it. But he says that if you take the square root of R, where R goes from 0 to 1 or whatever the radius of the circle is, if you take the square root, then it is uniform. And th that doesn't really make sense, maybe. Okay, so let me show you what's happening. Then we're going to model that in, in a Python. Uh, it's going to be quite awesome. Why my browser's off a little bit? Okay, so let's switch back over to the paper and let's see what's going on. So imagine I want to uh, pick a, a random point, say right here. Well, it's going to have an r value. I'm going to use lowercase r and a theta value. Well, Python is going to plot this in Cartesian coordinates. So, of course, I can say uh, the vector value of that, which I'll call uh, rc for Cartesian, is going to be r times the vector uh, cosine theta sine theta 0, right? Because this is cosine theta, that's sine theta. I can get my x and y values from r and theta. I'm basically switching to polar coordinates. In Web VPython, that's what I'm going to be using, uh, we have a random number generator that just says this, random. So random returns a number between 0 and 1. And so I can, if I have this of radius r, I can get uh, the this r as r times random. Ra not ramdon, ran, no, no. r equals r times times random. It's a function. And that's going to, and let's say I'm going to pick r is equal to 1, so it doesn't, big r is 1, so it doesn't really matter. And then what about the theta? Well, I'm going to, theta can be 0 all the way around to be 2 pi, so I could say theta is going to be equal to 2 times pi times random. But this doesn't work. Okay, so let me make this random numbers, a thousand data, a thousand points right here with Python. And then I'm going to show you that it doesn't work. And then I'm going to make a graph showing that it doesn't work. And then I'm going to use his trick. And then I'm going to show my trick. So we're really going to make three random circles. One that's wrong, two that are right. And how do we plot that? So let's just get started in Python. Um, I'm going to give you all the codes. So don't worry about that. Let's jump over here to Python. And I don't know if you can tell it's raining, but I don't really care. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so I'm using a Web v Python, like I said. Uh, the way I like to do uh, random stuff is to start with a counter, which I'm going to say n is equal to 0, and then a maximum, which I'm going to say capital N is 1,000. And then what I can do is say something like while n is less than n, I'm going to, let's just say print n. I'm going to show you how it works. Let's change this to 100 so that's not too big. And then I'll say n equals n plus 1, and it'll just, it'll just go through the whole thing, and it'll print 100 things. There you go. Okay, so that's how it works. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna do a thousand because I'm 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 brave here. So the first thing I want to do is is to let's uh, pick up here, r equals one. It doesn't really matter. Um, the first thing I want to do is generate a random radius, r value, lowercase r for my thing. So I'm gonna call it r n equals r times random, like that. And that's gonna be a number between zero and big R, which happens to be one. Now I need to generate a theta, which I'll call theta n, and that's going to be 2 times, the same thing I said, 2 times pi times random, and that's going to generate a number between 0 and 2 pi. Now I need to put a, I'm putting a sphere in three-dimensional space at that location. So I'm going to say sphere, which is a three-dimensional object in WebVPython, and I'm going to give it a name because I don't really care. Position equals rn times vector uh, cosine theta n, sine theta n, 
zero. And then I need to give it a radius, and let's make it small, so let's say uh, r divided by 100. That's it, 1,000 points. Um, actually, I can do this. Let's put rate 1,000. So rate tells Python to only do no more than 1,000 loops per second. And, and that way we can see it kind of develop. It'll take a second to do, but let's just see. Okay, let's do this. Uh, wrong random circle. Save it. I'll run it again. And you can see that it's not uniform. Even with the 1,000 data points, we can see that it's not uniformly distributed. There's more in the middle than outside. Because if you think of it this way, as if I... If I'm moving around in a circle and I'm, I'm distributing them along a path this way, well, we're going to, they're, they're evenly distributed around, if I take a path around here, the path length is bigger, right? So my points are going to be more just, uh, spread out. They could have the same uh, R value, but theta go from 0 to 2 pi has to be spread over a longer value. Whereas closer in, uh, these are all bunched in because the circles are smaller. Okay, so let's just let's change that to 3,000, just to see what it looks like. And this is in 3D. Those are our actual spheres. Okay. So what I want to do is to show that it's not uniform. Um, I could do this by, by, with some calculation. But what I'm going to do is make a graph of the point density, the radial point density, as a function of R. So let's do this. Let's make a graph. I'm going to go up here and make a graph. Um, yeah, G1 equals graph. Let's do it the right way. Uh, title equals radial density. X title is going to be equal to R. Let's just leave it like that. Uh, y title is going to be density. And then let's make give it some size. Width equals 500, height equals 250. Uh, so that's that's how you make a graph. Now I need to um, that just makes the encapsulation for the graph. I need to actually make the thing to graph. So I'm gonna say f1 is a g curve that will go in that graph, and let's just say it's give it a color of blue. Okay, so now uh, let's do this. Um, dr equals uh, r over a thousand. Yeah. And what I want to do is instead of plotting all these points, I'm going to instead calculate those vector values and add them to a list. So let's call this uh, points. Let's call it ps for points. It's a list of points. So down here, instead of making this, I'm going to say uh, r temp equals rn times vector. This sounds going to copy that. Why am I writing? When I can copy, copy all that. Right there. Uh, and then I'm going to add that to my list. ps equals ps plus r temp. And let me make this back down to 1,000 because I don't want to go, let's not get too crazy. Um, Let's put this at 100. So now that's just going to make my list of, of points. I don't need the rate anymore either. I can comment that out. So now I have, I have a list. So now what I want to do is go through the list, and I want to say, OK, here's my little slice of r from, from r to r plus dr. And I want to see, is that magnitude of that point within that radius? So let's see. So let's do this rt equals zero while I need to move up through the whole list while rt is less than r um, rt equals rt plus dr I'm going to forget that stuff so I'm adding that right now okay so now I'm going to say for uh, r r in ps so this is going to go through my list of points and call each point RR. And now I want to do is to see what if the magnitude of that point is in between R plus DR. Yeah. So if mag RR is greater than 
RT and mag RR is less than RT plus DR. Then I'm going to add it to a count. So let's see, let's say R count equals zero. R count equals R count plus one. So now at the end of that little loop right there, I'm going to know how many points are in that in that region of R. Uh, in order to find the density, I could say row is going to be equal to the count number, R count, divided by the area of that. So the area of that little slice is like uh, 2 times pi times R times dr. That's the area. So it'll give me the, the number per area. Okay. And now I can plot that point, f1.plot uh, rt row. Let's see what happens. So the number goes up. I thought it would go down. Let's see. If mag r is greater than rt and less than that, then add to the count. Set the count equals zero. So the oh, that's why. <laughs> Order of operations, people, matters. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we get a lot of a high point density up here, and it decreases down. That's good. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's check. Let's check Keenan Crane's idea that if I take the square root of R random numbers, then it works. So up here, I'm just going to take, say, square root, just like that. That's all. And let's even look at it. So I'm going to plot them again. Uh, let's just see what happens. Okay, so you'll notice now that the density is fairly constant. That's what we'd expect. And that's only 1,000 points. So let's go up here and do uh, 3,000 points. I mean, it looks fine. Uh, and, and this seems to be fine, too. So um, I'm kind of curious why it jumps around so much. Let's see if I can fix that. I wonder if I have a, should I have a smaller step size? or a bigger step size. We didn't like that. Okay, that, that's okay. I like the other way better. <laughs> okay, so that's one way to generate, that's actually two ways to make a random numbers in a circle. The wrong way, with the random r and a random theta, the right way by taking the square root of that. Now, here's the way that I like to do it. Let me run this one more time. Okay, let's just keep that circle there and let's make a whole new circle. Um, and so I'm gonna make a new graph and say F2 equals G curve, color equals color dot red. Uh, and then that's gonna go to the same place. Uh, I need a second list of points. So let's say PS2 equals an empty list. Um, now down here, I'm just gonna start all over. I don't wanna, I don't wanna destroy any of that stuff. I'm going to say uh, n equals 0. I'm going to just plot them. I'm going to make the graph. I'm just going to plot them. Uh, so I'm going to say while, while n is less than n, do the following. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to put a rate. Now, so what I'm going to do is to generate a random number between uh, negative 1, negative r and r, and negative r and r. Okay, And that will make me a box. I'm going to leave it like that. So let's make a box, not a circle. Okay, so I'm going to say, uh, I'm just gonna do one thing. R in two is gonna be equal to uh, R times vector. Now how do you go from negative one to one? It looks like this. Two times random minus one. Two times, oops, I gotta put my parentheses right there. Two times random minus one. Because think about that, if random is at zero, 
and I multiply it by two and I subtract one, I get down to negative one. If random is one, one times two is two minus one gives me one. So that does give me a number between negative one and one, uh, and then zero. So that's my vector. Now I'm just gonna make a sphere there. Am I missing something? Okay, let's just put a sphere there. Um, position equals Rn2, uh, radius equals uh, R divided by 100, and let's make these yellow just so we can separate them. Color equals color dot yellow, and then let's increase my number of counter. N equals N plus one, and I'm gonna run it. Should work. Okay, so you see I have uh, my box of, of points. It's a, it's a square, right? Because it goes from zero, negative one to one, and negative one to one, it's just a box. So what I'm gonna do is now look at the location of each one of those points I generate and say, is it in the circle or is it not in the circle? So what I'm gonna do is actually cut out all the things that are not in the circle. Okay, so down here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say, actually over here, if mag rn2, the magnitude of that vector, is less than r, then I'm going to make a sphere. And then I'm gonna make a counter. If not, I just start all over again. Okay, let's try that. There you go. And it looks, it looks uniform, but we need to test. So let's do the same test that we did before. Uh, I'm going to, uh, let's comment out um, this sphere thing. And let's comment out this sphere thing. And let's make, I have that PS2, I'm just gonna add it in there. Uh, PS2 equals PS2 plus RN2. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing I have over here to make my other graph. I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, the only thing I need to do is to change this to PS2. Um, and then F2. Let's see if that works. Okay, so again, they're the same. They're both uniform dis distribution. Uh, so I can do it either way. I can generate random points and cut out what I don't need, or I could find out a way to, to just make the points I want, but make them uniformly distributed. So there you go. The code for both these will be linked down below. I'm gonna give you the link to that Twitter uh, post also, because there's some other good information there. Um, there you go. The end.